For years, Nazi Germany has conducted a series of military threats on its neighboring countries to eliminate all political opposition and consolidate its power. After the German invasion of Poland in September 1939, World War II was officially launched. In a war initiated by German aggression and dreams of conquest, there was a race to build an atomic bomb first, in which the United States was one of the competitors. With the belief that whoever had the bomb first would win the war, the United States activated a project codenamed the Manhattan Project involving top leading scientists and U.S. engineers to work on the development of the world's first ever nuclear weapons. How the Manhattan Project was formed The story actually began in 1938 in Berlin, Germany, where a group of German physicists, namely Otto Hahn, Lies Meitner, and Fritz Strassmann, unexpectedly discovered the secrets of nuclear fission. Then the news of their fission experiments got out to the Allied powers, spreading the fears that Germany was working on creating a new type of bomb capable of massive destruction. In 1939, some scientists fleeing from the fascist regimes to the U.S., including Leo Szilard, Enrico Fermi, and Eugene Wigner, had persuaded Albert Einstein to send a letter to President Franklin D. Roosevelt informing of the dangers of atomic technology in the hands of the Axis powers. This historic letter set in motion the American nuclear research program to acquire the bomb before Nazi Germany did. The Advisory Committee on Uranium was first set up in Washington, D.C. as a team of scientists and military officials who researched uranium as a new kind of superweapon. After some changes over time, it was officially named the Office of Scientific Research and Development, OSRD, in 1941. That same year, the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor brought the U.S. officially into World War II in which the OSRD played a role as a military initiative with the support of top leading scientists. In 1942, the Manhattan Engineer District led by Colonel Leslie R. Groves was established in the Manhattan Borough with the purpose of creating an atomic bomb. The project was later named the Manhattan Project as much of the United States stockpile of uranium ore was located in the Manhattan Borough of New York City. However, New York City, due to its high population density and the proximity to the coast, soon lost ground as an ideal place for a super-secret project. For security reasons, the laboratories were later established at Oak Ridge, Tennessee, Hanford, Washington, and Los Alamos, New Mexico in isolated places far from urban centers and away from the coast. The theoretical physicist J. Robert Oppenheimer from the University of California, Berkeley, was assigned the project's scientific director of the Los Alamos Laboratory in northern New Mexico, where most of the work was done. What the Manhattan Project Did The process of creating an atomic bomb was a challenge to the Uranium Committee, as they needed to solve the puzzles about how to make weapons out of uranium and plutonium, an element that doesn't occur in nature, but can be made from uranium-238. At first, scientists were not even trying to make a bomb, but to figure out how to isolate the right kind of uranium to create the chain reaction. Therefore, at the early stage of the project, most of the time and money were spent finding out how to enrich uranium, or in other words, how to separate uranium-235 from uranium-238. Then they had to figure out how much uranium-235 was needed to create critical mass to sustain a nuclear chain reaction, as well as how to trigger a reaction at the uranium atom. None of this research was easy, but the scientists eventually succeeded in solving all of these puzzles after just a couple of years. By 1942, with all the earlier questions answered, the project was officially authorized by President Roosevelt and codenamed the Manhattan Project. The project was mostly conducted in the Los Alamos lab, where two such weapons were made later one fueled by uranium-235 and the other by plutonium-239. 
It was also the place where the first Manhattan Project bombs were built and tested. At 5.30 a.m. on July 16, 1945, scientists at Los Alamos Laboratory carried out the Trinity test, which exploded the first atomic bomb, the Gadget, using plutonium at the site near the Alamogordo Air Base, 120 miles or 193 kilometers south of Albuquerque, New Mexico. The explosion came as an intense light flash, a sudden wave of heat followed by the rise of a large mushroom cloud extending to 40,000 feet, 12,200 meters from the desert floor. The bomb generated an explosive power equivalent to 15,000 to 20,000 tons of trinitrotoluene TNT, signaling the beginning of a frightening nuclear age. The Bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki After the death of Roosevelt, Harry Truman was named the 33rd President of the U.S. in April 1945. Two months before the Trinity Test, the Allies defeated Germany while the war with Japan continued. That same year, the Potsdam Conference held near Berlin on July 26th issued a declaration demanding unconditional surrender of Japan or else Japan will face prompt and utter destruction. The Japanese refused the terms outlined in the Potsdam Declaration despite having little chance of winning after the war with the Allies. With no surrender agreement from Japan, Truman authorized the use of the bomb on Japan. On August 6, 1945, an American B-29 bomber named the Enola Gay dropped the little boy bomb on the city of Hiroshima. This atomic bomb using uranium-235 exploded nearly 2,000 feet above Hiroshima with a force equal to 15,000 tons of TNT, instantly devastating an area of five square miles. Truman called for surrender the day after the bombing at Hiroshima, but once again the Japanese government refused. The next atomic bomb named Fat Man, a plutonium-239 type, was dropped on Nagasaki on August 9th, producing a blast equal to 21,000 tons of TNT. The two bombings killed a total of more than 200,000 people and forced Japan to initiate surrender negotiations the next day and formally surrender on August 14, 1945, bringing World War II to the end. Immediate and long-term results of the Manhattan Project Despite causing unprecedented destruction and death, the significance of the Manhattan Project with the atomic bombing was that it forced Japan to surrender unconditionally and put World War II to the end. Besides this immediate effect, the long-term impacts of the Manhattan Project are unknown and unknowable. The radiation exposure poses adverse impacts on the health of people who get involved. Specifically, it is believed to increase the rate of getting cancer in survivors and birth defects of children. Additionally, the revelation of the Manhattan Project and the end of World War II did not bring about world peace, but a super conflict later between the Soviet Union and the U.S. after that. And on top of that, it was the detonation of these first nuclear bombs that furiously pushed the whole world into a new age. The frightening Atomic Age. Thanks for watching. If you find this information useful, please give us a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos of history.